So welcome to this tutorial which is going to look at streams in the new version of POPs, the particle system in Houdini. Uh, so I've set up some geometry here which is going to allow us to test this and this is going to be our emitter. So all I've done is I've created a circle, made it a polygonal circle and then I'm copying to each point of that circle a sphere that I've converted into a fog volume. So let me now emit some particles from that. So I need my source particles node, like so. And we can see that's instancing some particles on these volumes. And if I press play, what we'll see is that these will all shoot downwards. And in fact, I'm just going to reduce the amount of variance there so that they spread out a little bit less. OK. And the other thing I've done is used the display options here to increase the size of the particle display so that we can see them a little bit better. So streams are a way of dividing particles into different groups and applying a set of nodes to each of those groups. I think it's probably best to demonstrate this rather than to try and explain it. So let's have a look at our network here. So at the moment uh, we've got our source node and it's just going straight into a merge node and then into the pop solver. And if I middle click on this we can see that we've got something here called stream emission geosource. And what this is is this is the default stream that's created for all of our particles. All of the particles that uh, are in this simulation emitting from this particular node will be in that stream. So in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to set up some colors. So let me put down a pop color node and I'm going to make it uh, say a red color. Now what's going to happen here, it's going to be evaluated on every single frame and every frame those colors are going to be changed. If you want to just set it up at the beginning, set the color at the beginning of the simulation, you can set up a just born group here on the emitter and then you can apply this to the just born group. So uh, let's set up another stream and I can do this by just tapping pop stream. And you can see it starts with a condition. This is exactly the same display in fact you get for a pop group. And you can either set up a bounding box, have random allocations and so on. I'm going to use a rule and I'm going to say that at p dot y is less than minus 10. So when the y value of our location of the particle gets to below 10, minus 10, then this stream will become active. Let me wire this in. And then we let, let me put a, a pop color node here and give it a different color. Let's say yellow. And let's see what happens. So let me rewind this and start again. So we can see our particles start off red. And then at a certain point down here, they start becoming yellow. So far, so good. Uh, but what was to happen if we swapped uh, these two around? And let's just turn off for the moment this application to the birth group. Uh, in fact, let's switch that back on. This is working as it is. So if I switch off uh, this birth group, uh, you can see that all of the particles are red. So what's going on? We've, we've got this stream here, uh, which is selecting all the particles that are below a certain point, and we're coloring them yellow. And perhaps I should have said explicitly, with a stream, what happens is you set up the stream here and all of the nodes that are below this only apply to the particles that are in this particular stream. So only apply to the particles that are below minus 10. Well, uh, what's happening is that in fact this stream, this row of particles, this row of nodes rather, this column of nodes, is being evaluated for every single particle throughout our simulation. This is because this is the default stream and any other stream that we produce 
will exist at the same time as the default stream. It, it's possible for a particle to be in two streams at once, or three or four streams at once. So what's happening is that all of our particles that are below minus 10 are both in this stream and in this stream. And because of the order of evaluation in Houdini, uh, what's happening is that this is being evaluated first, and then this is being evaluated second. So the color is first set to yellow, and then set to red. If I select the birth group like this, then because it's not evaluating at every frame, it's only evaluating for the particles that are just born, it works properly. So perhaps a more extended example will help to explain this further, but broadly speaking, this stream that you have here that's connected to your emitter evaluates on every frame. So it will always evaluate for all of your particles. Any of the other streams that you've got will only evaluate for the particles that meet the condition that you set in the pop stream. So let's get rid of this and show how you can use uh, streams to set up a system in which the particles are in different states. So let's start off with the particles in a zero state. And let me put down here a pop wrangle. And we're going to apply this only to that birth group, only when the particles are first born. And this means it won't conflict with any streams we have later on. And I'm going to put i at state equals zero. So what's this doing? Well, it's creating a attribute called state. The at symbol means it's an attribute and it's an inter integer attribute. And if we have a look at our geometry spreadsheet, down on the pop object and onto geometry, we should, let me just select it, uh, we should be able to see state. And as you can see at the moment, it's zero for everything. So we've got a state of zero, it's not very interesting. Uh, let's set up a stream which deals with that. So let's put down a pop stream and let's set the stream to i at state equals zero. So this is just going to be those particles that are in state zero. So let me put that at zero. And the first thing we're going to do, let's color them so that we can see where we are. And let's give them, I don't know, green color. And then uh, let's add a pop attract. And let's just leave this at the defaults, which is going to just attract these particles in towards the origin. And then we add it into this merge node. And we can see that uh, our particles are now green because they start in the zero state. And oh, I need to uh, turn off gravity. So let's disable the gravity node. And um, we should now see, there we are, that they're all zooming in towards the middle. Let me do something else now. Let me say, well, once they've got to the middle, I want something else to happen. And what I want to happen is for them to shoot upwards. So let's start by putting down a pop group. And uh, let's say, let's call it pop group center. The name is going to be center. And let's use a bounding box. And I'm going to use a bounding sphere at the origin, which now appears in the display there. Uh, let's make that a little bit smaller. So this is going to contain all of the particles that enter this uh, sphere. And now I can lay down a pop wrangle. And I can set it so that it's only going to operate on those particles which are in the center group. And let's for the moment just do state equals one. So that's going to move our particles out of this state and into the next one. So let me just cut and paste the stream node. And now instead of the condition being the state is zero, let's make it one. And let's make this state zero. Let's say one rather. And now let's add in a pop color, like so. And let's add in 
oops, a another pop attract, but in this case, let me just connect this up. So in this case, I didn't want to put that there. Let's move that back to the end, the output there. So in this case, let's move our tractor upwards. which puts the goal right at the top. So what we should now see, and this color, I want it to be maybe a blue. So what we should now see is that these get to the center and then they're going upwards to this new attractor. But as you can see, they're bending outwards. And the reason they're bending outwards is because all that's happening is that velocity that we had when they got into this sphere in the center is being maintained so that they're shooting overshooting and then being attracted around to the new attractor. So one of the things we might want to do is to kill the velocity as soon as they enter this bounding sphere at the center. Uh, and that's simple enough to do. Uh, we can lay down a pop velocity here and we can change the velocity to zero and apply it only to the group center. And what we should now find is that the velocity just goes straight up. So the, there's a subtlety here which is worth commenting on briefly. When we get to this pop wrangle, the evaluation of this pop wrangle, we're setting the state to one, which means that it's no longer fulfilling the condition here, which is that the state should be zero. However, these other nodes, this pop velocity node is being evaluated. So what's going on? Well, the check to see whether this condition is valid and therefore whether you should be applying these nodes is conducted once per time frame, one once per time step. And though so though we've changed the state here, these nodes will continue to be evaluated just for that time step for those particles. So now we've got it going upwards. Uh, let's um, make it a little bit more interesting, say by adding a pop force. And let's um, let's add some noise, let's say noise of 0.2. And then we, what we should see is this goes up and it's got a little bit more noise. That's, that's much more interesting. Okay, well, let's add another step to this simulation, which I'm going to make a little bit more complicated. And it's gonna show you how to time things from the start of a particular state. Sometimes you want to say, well, two seconds after the particle enters this particular state, something should happen. And we're going to do something that shows you how to do something like that. So let's um, set up another group, pop group, like so. And let's call this pop group top, for example. And the group name is going to be top. Oops. Top. And we want it to be for example, uh, at at p dot y is greater than five. Let's say I think where did we position that attractor five? So when this is greater than five, we're going to put things into the top group. So once those things reach the the attractor up here, they're going to go into this group. And then another pop wrangle, like so. And the pop wrangle is going to just apply to that group that we just created called top, just to the things that have reached up to a certain height. And I'm going to I at state. So I'm going to set the state to two, which is the next step in our simulation. 
And I'm also going to do a couple of other things. The first thing I'm going to do is set up a new attribute, v at old v. So this is a vector attribute called old v, and I'm going to set it to the current velocity, v at v. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sh shorten the lives of the particles. I'm going to have them die off within a certain period of this. But um, let me do that by setting the life attribute. So I'll explain this when I've finished typing. So at the moment, uh, this is going to set the life attribute to the current age plus a certain amount. And when we put this ch function here, ch function, what it's doing is telling uh, the node to look for a parameter on the node called duration and use that value here. And of course, there isn't at the moment a parameter called duration, but I can create one. This will create it automatically by kicking this. So now we can see we have a duration. Let, let, let me give it, say, seven seconds, the duration. So this is going to add seven seconds that the particles will die off within seven seconds of entering this state. And I'm going to vary that by times fit01. Fit01, as you remember, puts an amount between two particular bounds. So rand at id, that's going to ran, produce a random number between 0 and 1 for each particle. And I'm going to fit it between, say, 0 0.8 and 1.2. 1.2. I can I can have anything I want here, and it could be any numbers I want, but that, that's what I'm going to use now. And uh, let me just, I'll, in fact, why don't I enlarge this so that we can see it more clearly. So this is going to set the life, that's the end of life, to the current age, plus a duration, times a random amount for each particle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a, uh, a a new velocity. So, and what I'm going to do is set it to normalize set at p dot x zero at p dot z. So, what's this going to do? Well, p dot x and p dot z are the x and y components of the position of the of the particle. So it's going to create a vector that lies on the xz plane, isn't going upwards. And at the moment it's going to have length 1, but what I'm going to do is multiply it by the length of the current velocity. So this is going to, if you like, convert the velocity going to be going at the same speed, but it's not going to be going upwards anymore. It's going to be going outwards, and the di direction is going to be determined by where the particle happens to be. So it's going to fan the particles outwards. And the next uh, thing I'm going to do is set off a time when we're going to start this process of moving from one velocity to the other. So f at start t equals time. And f at end t, so that uh, time should be with a capital T, and that's the current time at which we enter this, uh, we've entered this state. And then nt is at start t plus So, what's this doing? 
Well, we're setting up a, a tribute on our particles, which is set to the current time at which this node is being evaluated. So it's setting it to the time at which this particle is entering this new state, uh, state 2. And then we are giving it a transition time. And what I'm going to do in a minute is convert slowly this old velocity, this old velocity to the new velocity over uh, an extended period of time. And the period of time ends at end t. So I've got the start time plus the duration times 0.8. So the particles are, are not going to die before this is finished. And then we take this uh, and randomize it a bit in the same way that we did here. And in this case, I've added something to the ID attribute, which is varies one, each ID is different for each particle. And then we add something to make sure that we're not getting the same results that we had up here. So uh, that's rather complicated. Let's have a look at what it produces. So we've got uh, our simulation here. Let's run it for a certain amount. I've uh, dragged it so that it's just going to evaluate as quickly as it can. And there we go. So we've got um, our particles going up like this. And we can have a look at our geometry spreadsheet. And we can see immediately we've got an NT and a start T. So for this particular particle, it's obviously already entered that state, state two. Great. And it is starting at it entered that state at 12.9 time and it's going to end that transition at end t so let me show you then how to convert that velocity move that velocity so this is going to apply this new stream is going to apply to all of the particles whose state is 2 and i can connect it back to the merge node and that is going to then let's give it another color and uh, we'll give it a color of oh i don't know purple and now we need a pop velocity node and the pop velocity is going to be able to enable us to set the velocity and what i'm going to do is i'm going to set it uh, and we can see that we don't set it using an attribute because this is a, a node with a parameter and so this uh, this bit of vex code down here actually just uses the, 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 the parameter name and I can show this by pass through and you can see that pass through just put scale equal to scale and v equals to v so that's just keeping it the same but I'm going to change v so I'm going to change v by working out a factor. Let's write, write this factor. And the factor is going to be based on a smooth transition from one value to another. And it's start t, end t, and time. Let me enlarge this again so that we can see it. So this is going to give me the smooth function smoothly varies between this value and this value. So that when the time value is equal to this value, this function is going to produce zero. And when it's equal or greater to this value, it's going to produce one and it will vary smoothly between the two. So it's a great way to smoothly transition from one to another. So this factor is going to be to vary between zero and one. And of course, what I want is old v times uh, 1 minus factor. Now, notice I don't put an at in front of the factor. This is just a variable that I'm using in this bit of code. We're not going to store it on the points. So v equals at old v, and I need to put a, a v in vector old v, 1 minus factor plus new v times factor. And that's going to change our velocity over time from pointing upwards, more or less, to pointing outwards. And let me just, that's probably giving us an error because, yeah, because our simulation was several frames in. So if I now have a look at our 
simulation, what we should see is that as this gets upwards, these turn blue and they start moving out, as we can see, and the velocity upwards becomes a velocity outwards, and then they start dying off. So let's add one final uh, step in this simulation, and I'm going to lay down a pop group again, and we're going to, in fact, use this time a rule rather than a bounding box. And the rule is going to be the particles where at time, so the current time, is greater than end t. So the ones that have gone through this transition. And in fact, for this, uh, of course, I don't need to use a pop group. That was... Uh, so I can just use the pop wrangle. I don't need the pop group. So the pop wrangle can be if at time is greater than nt. So if we've got beyond the end of that transition, uh, then we can set i at state equals 3. I think it is. We're now on state 3. So this is going to change the state for the particles that have got to the end of that transition. Let me just move that to rewind this. And this one is pop steam 3. And this is going to be for the particles that are in state 3. And let's give these a final color. Let's pop, go for something lighter this time, light green maybe. And we will give them a little bit of a downward force. So let's say minus 0.5 and a little tiny bit of noise. And let's see what this looks like. So we'll play this through. And it goes up. They then get above a certain level, they spread out. And at a certain point, they start changing color and they start moving down and they start dying off. And just to make things a little bit more interesting, uh, what I'm going to do is vary the alpha of these particles so that as they die off, uh, they're going to find that, they, that the, the alpha decreases, that they get more transparent. So I can add another pop color here. And let's distinguish this one by calling it pop color alpha. And let me set the alpha to a ramp. And this is going to allow me to have a ramp value for my alpha. And in fact, what I'm going to do is put it to 1 at the beginning and 0 at the end. And I need a value between 0 and 1. At the moment, it's, it's, uh, it's using the age. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, take the... Actually, we need to we need to perhaps have a a new variable here to to do this properly. So when this goes into in state three, let me add a new attribute. So age at three. So this is going to be the age at which it enters the third state, which of course will just be age at the point that we evaluate this node. So that's going to give us this attribute that we can that tell us the age at which it entered this final state. So I can then take the current age minus age at 3 and let's put brackets around that 
and then we can divide it by the maximum age, which is of course life minus age at three. So this is going to, when, when we're at the end of the life here, these two things are going to be the same, and that's going to evaluate the one. Um, when we're right at the beginning of our time here, this is going to evaluate to zero. So at zero, it's going to be trans it's going to be opaque, and then as we get near and near the end of the life, it's going to evaluate to one, and it's going to be right at the end here. So let's um, see whether that is working. Yep. And when we play things through, something odd has happened because we've got we can't see any particles. And if we right click here, we can well you can't see that there are actually some particles here. You you probably can't see this. There are 7,000 of them. So what's going on? Well, it's because we've introduced uh, this new alpha attribute uh, in this stream. So we're creating an alpha attribute when we evaluate this node. And in this stream, it knows what the alpha attribute needs to be because we've got this, this pop color node that's setting it up. But what should the alpha attribute be in all of these other streams? Because, of course, all of the attributes are on all of the particles all of the time. Uh, they... Uh, if you create an attribute, you have to have the attribute on the particles the whole the whole time. Just what's the value when it's not in this stream? Well, the answer is it defaults to zero. So if we have a look now at our geometry spreadsheet, and let me, oh, we can see there's the alpha, which defaults to zero, and that's not actually what we want. We want it to default to one. So what I can do is right at the beginning here, when we are in state zero, I can add another pop color node and this is going to set the alpha I don't want to update color, I want to update alpha and it's going to set it to 1. So now what's going to happen is that we see our particles again. So they come up whoops, why is that happening? Well, I reset the simulation of that. That problem seems to have disappeared. So it's working properly again now. So our particles go up. At a certain point, they reach this position. They spread out. They turn into these particles. And we can see, as they drift off, they get uh, more and more transparent. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, that's an example of how to use uh, the streams functionality in the POP networks, uh, the, the, the POPs in DOPS system of Houdini. And it's a very useful way of simplifying your POP network so that you can use different nodes on particles at different states. Anyway, I hope it's been useful. See you next time.